the Adjustment Bureau thoughts. A couple of people I've seen on boards say that it would be interesting if we found out what exactly Damon was to do once he became president. I don't think so. I think the interesting... It's more interesting the more vague it's kept. I would have preferred if they had kept it more vague. If they hadn't spelled out, you will be president if you do not date her. I would have liked for it to be, your political career will skyrocket. You know, will continue this path. And maybe he had just, like, muttered, president, and just no response from the, you know. Or, you and Blunt may be together. You have a chance, you know. Because what we end up with is, oh, neither of you will ever, you know, reach your goals, or you will both reach your goals, you just won't be together. You know, I have to say this. Isn't Damon just a little bit selfish? You can be president of America and you can fix a lot of things, you know. This is the way things should go, you know, this is the, you know, things will get better if you get president. Or you can be personally happy with this other person. I'm all for happiness, but several people have already died for this guy to become president, you know. His father, his brother. His mother was, you know, an accident, or not supposed to be, but, yeah, I don't know. I would kind of think that, maybe just ponder if it would maybe, and I'm not even sure he said to her, you know, by the way, if you follow me, your career's down the crapper. Did I happen to mention that? Maybe he says that, you know, just as they're off screen, you know, from the final moments or something, and that's... Yeah. As I also said in the review, I'm not sure how much of a future these two people have. I mean, yeah, they seem to be working fine now, but anyone who's been in a relationship knows that at first it can seem really good, and then it can turn really ugly. They've spent like one night together and maybe all put together two days, give or take. That's not enough to know a person, okay? You need to see them at their worst. You need to be able to handle them at their worst. They need to see you at your worst. <sighs> yeah. Not a big fan of the whole romantic fantasy there. I think the movie would have been a lot stronger if this had really been two people, long-time relationship, then suddenly you may have this other option. If you follow this, your career may... Yeah, already said that. I also do have to wonder, why did they not meet sooner? Didn't didn't he say the 70s, the 80s, the 90s? They were supposed to be together. Okay, why did they never meet? It's not like, oh, hey, I remember you from kindergarten or something. No, they've apparently never met. That's a slow plan. I'm sorry, but... Three decades, and then suddenly, oh wait, no. <laughs> Good thing they never met. That does sort of explain the whole, you know, why they keep bumping into each other anyway, you know, the conflicting plans. I'm not sure I think that should have been in there, though. I think, wasn't it more interesting when it just seemed like there are forces that, you know, we can't completely comprehend here, you know, the... Yeah, maybe I should talk about the religious illusions. If they even spell out, you know, are you angels? You know, uh, not sure. We, you know, they could be. I think it's perfect that we never see the chairman, or chairwoman as it might be, and as it apparently originally was. Because the moment you have that, I, seriously, I was dreading, like, the architect kind of scene, you know. Man, am I glad they did not go that way. It's perfect to leave it like that. You know, they have the explanation that, oh, you know, everybody meets her at some point, but not everybody realizes, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, that's exactly the... Because the moment you have that, the moment you have a character come face to face with, let's just spell it out, God. Yeah, 
not that good of an idea because that just... It takes it away. It takes away the mystery. We need mystery. And I'm a broken record on that subject, and I realize that. The less we know about this stuff, we should just barely understand it and then fill in the rest, because that's far more interesting. What we think of, you know, and it can then develop in our minds, you know. You might rewatch a movie years later and think something completely different from it, if it allows itself to be vague and, you know, ambiguous. The... I should maybe also address a couple of Matrix things. Maybe these really weren't intentional, but... Okay, the line, you realize no one's ever done this before. Did anybody else expect the response to be, that's why it's going to work? The... Then we have the whole, you know, doors teleporting keymaker thing. Yeah, it... Also, the... Seeing the stadium... I'm not missing any greater meaning to that, right? That was just like... For the people of New York to say, Hey, see, it's your stadium. I mean, there could maybe arguably be some meaning behind the Statue of Liberty setting, you know. I quite like the shot where Damon walks out through a door and the people are like staring. How did he go? Just come through there and you can still see out through the open door, you know, and the camera turns slightly and it still holds. That was quite nice. The telekinesis and, you know, intuition they had about people's decisions and then the maps that we can't quite interpret. I liked the the choice of powers. It did not make them too powerful and it did make them a force to be reckoned with without making them like lethally dangerous. I really like that there is no sight of a gun in this movie. I think that would have completely blown it. Also sort of on that, you know, no fights, really. There's, like, what, a couple of... Is there even more than two blows thrown, you know, both by Damon? You know, and he knocks out that one angel guardian dude, you know, because he, he used to fight, you know, he knows how to do that. It just... It really would have taken away from it. Anyway, on the powers... I... Like the, the the telekinesis, they got nice uses out of that. I, out of the fact that you know, the sappy romantic side of me loves the fact that he does try to do the, you know, knocking the coffee thing, and it just helps them. You know, it moves them closer together. You know, it's like you spilled coffee on me, now I love you even more. <laughs> it's just yeah, it's that. Delirious feeling you, you know, at the beginning of the in love kind of thing, you know, even though it was like a while later. Wasn't it like three years later at that point? Anyway. No, wait, that's before the three. Anyway. And the, the maps. I really like that we can't necessarily completely tell what they're supposed to be. We can see when something is going wrong, you know, with the red, and we can see when it's just going well, and there at the end, you know, it's like the plan is erased, you know, it has, they're not going to adjust his life anymore, you know, it works, it's simple, it's visual, we're not supposed to understand it, because we're not adjusters, you know, so, th that's it, it, it works as a, and I also, I gotta say, when he starts showing it to her, you know, her reaction, you know, when he shows her, I half expected her response to be, David, those are blank pages, you know, and like, oh no, they've already, you know, it's, you know, she's just gonna think he's insane, it's too late. Part of me does really want, wish that it had had, you know, the kind of downer ending, 
you know, it, hey, it could have had the same moral, you know, the whole thing of free will with responsibility, you know, because it is kind of odd to suggest that free will with responsibility is the moral of a film after that film has been a man pretty much without questioning it, following his heart, even though he's been told numerous times that it's going to end really poorly. That's not necessarily really, you know, the whole responsible free will thing. Anyway, I like the the hats thing, you know, because the moment you're told, you know, anyone you see with a hat, you just realize, oh crap, you know, the guy, I mean, we already knew that the guy who tells her that David will be back, you know, in some hours, we knew that he worked for them, but then you also think about, oh, right, and the cop, too, you know, anyone with a hat, and yeah, and the fact that he can then, you know, move through, and the fact that it's, he's so impulsive that that's what keeps the hammer from finding him, you know, and turning the knob counterclockwise to get into the bureau itself, and the whole thing. I thought it also worked pretty reasonably with the stormtroopers of the Adjustment Bureau, you know, the guys with the those masks things and the shield, face shield thing, and you know, a couple of them had like sticks, but other than that, you know, no weapons, and they just grab him, you know, there's no fight, there's not some big thing, it's just, you know, you get that those are the soldiers, they're the ones who run to get to you know, they, they do the, the grunt work. They, they don't plan, they just, yeah. And the whole thing with, you know, following orders and should you follow orders blindly and all that questioning. And it just, it, it works, you know. Maybe it's slightly predictable that the reason Harry is so, you know, second-guessing and, you know, that's why he's so stressed out, that's why he falls asleep and, you know, misses it and it messes up with the coffee spill because he had the father and brother killed, you know, and they could have done stuff too, you know, but oh no, we had to sacrifice it all for this one guy who's not even grateful enough to actually pursue it, but anyway that just, it, it makes sense, you know, because that's what happens when you, you know, do stuff like that for long enough. Sooner or later, you, you know, you either completely disassociate yourself from your subjects, or you actually become incapable of doing the job, because it's just not human nature to just completely unquestioningly hurt your fellow man, like that. The... The whole thing with them both, you know, the immaturity and such, it worked quite well, I'd say, and... You know, they just... It wasn't too much. I'm not a big fan of immaturity myself, and it just worked. You really, you liked them, you know, they seemed like fun people to hang around, you know, the, yeah. And it also made quite good sense, the part about how, you know, if she was in his life, then she'd be enough. You know, he wouldn't want to pursue a political career. He doesn't, he wouldn't be left with that big hole inside that he has to fill. I'm not entirely sure that I believe that that could be filled by one person without, you know, David turning all clingy and her probably being a bit, you know, repelled by that, but again, I am bringing logic into a romantic fantasy. I really felt like we, you know, all the major Bureau characters, we did get to 
care about. You know, I didn't hate Stamp. I understood him. You know, it just, he just really believes in that kind of, you know, he's, he's a bit single-minded. And, you know, Richardson also, you know, he just, he really believed that this would be his big break, you know, that this case would, or at least he hints at that. Anyway, you know, you understand him. And Harry, yeah, just, I like that the religious illusion was only an illusion, that it really never was clearly said this is God, these are angels, you know, it, it was suggested that maybe, but that's it, you know, because some people will want to think that, will want to believe that they represent angels. And at the same time, people like me, who do not believe in any deities, can walk away unoffended, you know, I don't mind the idea of such a, I don't believe in it, but is interesting, you know, free will and decisions, choices, you know. Anyone who's interested in philosophy, I would say, would be interested in these things. And I suppose that's more or less what I have to say about it. So, until next time. Those are my thoughts on Adjustment Bureau. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.